Our lovable crew of space outlaws have gone through hell and back and come out on the other side clean as a whistle. What new adventures await them? Well, let's hop into the pages of Guardians of the Galaxy issue number 7 and find out. Alrighty then, so as the comic opens up, Donny Cates reminds us about the mounting threat that's been going on in the background involving the Universal Church of Truth. Don't remember who they are? Well, they're longtime Guardians villains. A radical and dangerous religious sect dedicated to worshipping the Magus, the evil alternate of Adam Warlock, They've been hanging out in subspace for a while, and now they're back bigger and badder than ever. The Nova Corps gets called in to deal with the Church's brand new floating death base, but if you've been following all the Marvel Cosmic books, you'll know the Novas are a shadow of what they once were. Heck, most of them don't even have special helmets anymore. The hooded leader of the Church, a guy calling himself Patriarch, turns the space station's engines on the Nova Corps, and they all end up getting sucked inside. Well, geez, I guess it's time for another recruitment drive then, isn't it? Now, back Back over with the Guardians, they're celebrating their last victory over Thanos. Gamora and Peter are really celebrating, knocking superhero boots after Peter finally said that he loved Gamora at the end of the last arc, and they're not wasting any time. And I mean, really, in the realm of comic books, there's no time like the present, am I right? They could easily all be dead, or evil, or written out of continuity tomorrow, for all they know. The Guardians team is also a lot bigger than it used to be, taking on a bunch of brand new conscripts, and because of that, they've decided to upgrade to a brand new ship. Not not named after an 80s lady this time, but an 80s dude. Welcome to the Bowie, everybody. Now, our heroes don't get to relax long before they're eventually called in on a brand new mission. Jason of Spartex, Peter Quill's dad, as well as intergalactic mover and shaker, sends a distress call to his son, saying that after the Novas got their asses hand to him, Spartex tried to step up and deal with the threat. It didn't go well. And now it looks like the only people who can save the universe and turn the tide of battle is the Guardians of the Galaxy, and as such, they're ready to jump on into action. Now, this isn't the first time the Guardians and the Universal Church of Truth have clashed, and because of that, Star-Lord was pretty confident he knew what he had to do. Take a team inside the ship, destroy their faith engines where the group draws their power, and be back in time for drinks. Unfortunately, as we discover, this isn't the regular Universal Church of Truth. These guys are actually from the future, and they don't draw power from faith anymore. They draw it from life. Or to be more specific, they literally suck the will to live out of you now to power their machines, and they're going to use it to resurrect the Magus. The team goes in all gun sure and ends up getting trapped up in the church's web of anti-life, which slowly starts sucking them dry. To make matters worse, Patriarch, the church's leader, is revealed to actually be Jason of Spartax. Which, considering that his name was Patriarch, I feel dumber for not guessing that that's who he was first. Now, with the majority of the team taken hostage, the only two left are Moon Dragon and Groot. We discover that this whole issue has actually been them retelling the story of what went down to a third party, who is revealed to actually be Rocket Raccoon, who has been absent from this series mysteriously since the book started. Rocket says that he's dying, but that he can think of worse ways to go out than saving his team, and it's on that note right there that the comic comes to a close. And so that was Guardians of the Galaxy issue number 7, everybody, and it was another rip-roaring cosmic Marvel adventure. We get a lot of nice callbacks to other moments in Guardians of the Galaxy history. We get some nice movement forward in the relationship between Peter and Gamora. And we're promised a whole story about why Rocket left and why he's so sick right now. Should be good stuff. Overall, I'd give this an 8 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Joel, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, why not take a closer look at some of these other videos I have available from the channel. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're in a supportive mood, why not check out my Patreon page? Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. I would really appreciate it, and with that, I will be sure to be back again next time with even more great comic content that smacks of greatness. Bye bye everyone.